I've got a great idea. Let's fight about which cardio zone is the best. That's like what it looks like right now. Okay, zone one's better than zone five. Zone three is better than zone two. My way of cardio is better. Look at, there are a bunch of different ranges of cardio, five if you wanna be exact, and probably goes on beyond that. And each one has a different benefit and a different use case. So let's understand what the different zones of cardio are and where and when you can get a benefit from each of them. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first one is zone one. Now zone one catches a lot of flack, okay? Because zone one is very low intensity. And in order to burn a lot of calories with zone one, you'd have to be doing it for a long period of time. But it's not just about calories. Of course, that matters. It's about the energy substrates that you are using. So throughout this video, I'm going to come back to sort of an analogy of a train, okay? A steam train that is running on coal. And you have a person that is shoveling coal into the engine, okay? And that is going to carry us throughout this video. When you are in zone one, you are predominantly using fats, almost exclusively using fats. Now in the case of this coal analogy, fat is gonna be these big giant lumps of coal. Okay, and the person that's shoveling the coal, these big lumps are heavy and they are hard. So he has to dig deep and he has to schlep them into the engine. But it's okay because with zone one, everything is moving slow enough that he has time to shovel a big lump and then come back and shovel another big lump. So these big lumps of coal are like fat. And when you are in a zone one cardio zone, you are able to process these big lumps of coal and you are predominantly using fats. Another thing is zone one works phenomenally well when you are fasted because your insulin levels are low and you have a better time mobilizing fat or these big lumps of coal. So you actually make it a little bit more efficient for the guy shoveling the coal. But let's look at some research here. There's a study that was published in the journal Obesity that took a look at placebo, high intensity interval training, and very light training. So in this case, zone one. Now what they found with the zone one is that they had them do about 30 minutes at 50% VO2 max. And by the end of five weeks, they progressed to 45 minutes at 65% VO2 max. They did just three times per week for the five weeks. What they found is at the end of the five weeks, the group that was doing the very light cardio compared to the hit cardio lost significantly more abdominal fat. Even though they were essentially working out close to the same amounts of time, the energy that they pulled from was much more in the way of abdominal fat. So very interesting, although you might in time have to do longer periods of workouts with that. Another study that was interesting published in the journal Healthcare found that low intensity cardio, like zone one, two times per week, actually increased recovery. So the blood flow, everything you're getting from that can actually help stimulate recovery, not just net neutral, but stimulate recovery. So you're getting a fat loss effect and you're stimulating recovery. Then we move into zone two. Now zone two is very interesting because much like zone one, you are still schlepping big lumps of fat, big lumps of coal. This time the guy's getting a little bit more tired, but he can still keep up but he's ramping up the production of it. You're working a little bit harder, you're breathing a little bit harder, but you're still able to go through oxidative phosphorylation. You're still able to shovel the big lumps of coal in and burn them, burn the fat. Now there's a study that was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology that once again took a look at high intensity compared to zone two compared to non-exercise. And they did this one for 12 weeks. What they found is after the 12 weeks of doing low intensity training, fat burning during exercise increased by 40%. Now, let me back up, what does that mean? It means 12 weeks of training with zone two actually made people more efficient at using fat. When they went to work out after being conditioned, they were able to use fat 40% better. So zone two is really good for training your body to get good at using fats. So that combination of zone two and zone one could be very, very powerful. Now there was also a study that was published in the journal Physiology that found that zone two actually ends up increasing phosphocreatine stores as well as overall decreasing lactate. What that means is that doing zone two cardio 
actually allows you to get better at your higher intensity cardios because it allows you to buffer lactate a little bit better, allows you to clear it, and it repairs or at least kind of restores and preserves your phosphocreatine stores so you have more explosiveness. Now this is done as a warm up, but also generally speaking. So zone two cardio can actually improve your lifting and improve your higher intensity work. It's really, really cool. Now, the important thing, no matter what kind of situation you're doing, is whenever you're doing these kinds of cardio, we have to remember that minerals are really a key component of how our muscles are contracting and how this energy system, the man shoveling coal, is really working. So always make sure that you're bringing sodium in. That's why electrolytes are very important. It's not just because of dehydration, it's because of the muscles contracting and how this whole system works. I put a link down below for Element, which is my favorite electrolyte. They are 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, 60 milligrams magnesium. They have mango chili flavor, a lemon habanero flavor, just amazing stuff. So that link down below will get you a free sample pack along with your purchase. So if you try some, you can get a free sample pack that you can give to a friend or anything like that. Super cool. And that link down below is drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. Drinkelement.com slash Thomas. And that's where you can get that free sample pack along with a purchase. Now we move into zone three. Now zone three is interesting because you're still moving a lot of big lumps. You're still burning a fair bit of fat. But now the guy shoveling the coal is just getting a little bit tired. So he's starting to move to some smaller chunks. And when he shovels those smaller chunks, he's kind of missing the engine a little bit. He's missing the mitochondria and it has to go through what's called anaerobic glycolysis. So it's really a mix mash here. You have some fat being used and some carbs being used with two different energy systems. Now when glucose doesn't enter the mitochondria, when it goes through a different process, you end up having a buildup of lactic acid. That's why at zone three, you can start to get that lactic acid burn. Depending on your fitness level, it just enters at different points. Now, this is great because you need to condition yourself to get better and develop a better lactate threshold, which we'll talk about in a minute. But at the end of the day, it does kind of impede you from burning fat because eventually you're running into a lactate threshold that stops the fat loss. So what's the benefit for zone three in that case? Well, there's metabolic benefits, but there's also like cellular and even sort of uh, circulatory benefits. Okay, you have an increase in what is called capillarization. Okay, what happens here is the fiber to capillary ratio, or should I say the capillary to fiber ratio actually improves. Okay, with zone three cardio, they've seen approximately a 21% increase in capillary to fiber ratio, meaning you're having more capillaries being formed and more blood flow through those capillaries. What does that mean? Well, that means more oxygen can get delivered. Okay, so if you have an improvement in capillarization by doing zone three cardio, which is you know, gonna be like that 70, 80-ish percent of your max uh, VO2 max, if you do that, what ends up happening is you build this capillary density, you build more capillaries that allow you to use oxygen better in other zones. Okay, so zone three is really good for building performance. It's not as good for fat loss. It's really good for that general performance and what I call the engine. Zone three is your engine. What can keep you going for a long time at a decent intensity. The other thing is when you have more capillarization, you have more ability to flush waste. So the more capillary density you have, the more ability to clear lactate and have lactate go through the Cori cycle and become an energy system. So if you get really good at zone three, you can grind and grind and grind and grind for a long time. Okay, and it's also gonna make you better at the other zones, leading into zone four. Zone four is sort of the cream of the crop when it comes down to the anaerobic side of things. Most people think zone five is where you wanna be, but we'll talk about what that's good for in just a second. Zone four is like 80 to 90% of your VO2 max. You're really just working hard, and you're really at this point, pretty much all using small lumps of coal. No more big lumps of coal, very, very few. So essentially, the lack of oxygen being available makes it so that lactic acid builds up very fast or lactate builds up very fast. Okay, most very fit people are going to end up having this lactate threshold of about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes if you're very, very fit. It can be a little bit more, it can be a lot less if you're not very fit. 
This means that you've reached a point where you can no longer buffer lactic acid because you've got so much anaerobic glycolysis happening and you're just falling behind. Basically, you're shoveling this coal and you're getting so exhausted, the coal can't be shoveled anymore and the train stops. But one of the things that can happen, which is very interesting, which is why I'm a big fan of still doing zone four work, is you get what is called mitochondrial biogenesis. Because the severe quote unquote deficit you put yourself in very, very quickly with zone four, you increase what is called AMPK and you also increase what is called sirtuin one. Now, making it very simple, these are systems that basically are in line with when we end up in a deficit. So AMPK is our energy sensor. It senses, uh-oh, energy demand is much greater than what's available. So all of a sudden AMPK is activated. Long story short, what this does is it triggers something called PGC1A to be activated. When PGC1A is activated, it actually encourages more mitochondria to be built. It's called mitochondrial biogenesis, and you're literally building more engines. So it's like in this case with the freight train or the steam train, it's like, okay, hey, we need an adaptation here. We need more engines because this guy that's shoveling the coal, he's missing the engine all the time and he can't keep up, whatever. We need to build more engines. So instead of one engine, you got two, you got three, you got four, you got five. Mitochondrial biogenesis, you have more energy factories. Now this is where zone four can really, really be advantageous because you do periodic bouts of zone four with that high intensity and that's going to allow you to have more fat burning factories in your zone two cardio. Okay, so this is exactly something we need to pay attention to. Now we move into zone five, which is very intriguing. Okay, because zone five is essentially your max, right? Zone five, you're using uh, ATP that's available literally in the muscle, like what's left in the fibers, and you're also utilizing creatine phosphate system, and then you're utilizing what's called, uh, well, part of that creatine phosphate system where you're using inorganic phosphate combining with ADP. Complicated stuff we don't need to worry about, but basically it's very short bursts. And very, very trained people can kind of sit in that zone five for 30 seconds or so. It varies, right? It all depends on what your definition of zone five is, and if you're at 90% or 100% within that zone five. The bottom line is that we don't get a ton of benefit from zone five that we wouldn't get from zone four. In fact, there's an interesting study. The study in sports medicine took a look at high intensity interval training with zone four, and sprint training with zone five. Okay, they found that both of these zones, zone four and zone five, increased what's called left ventricular mass. They both increased the heart size, but only zone four increased cardiac output and stroke volume, increasing more blood, right? More blood delivery. So interestingly enough, it looks like for overall fitness, zone four is better than zone five. But where zone five comes in is improving the efficiency of those quick energy systems and potentially with building muscle. So being able to fire a muscle really quick, build tissue, explode, right? So for athleticism, zone five is very important because that zone five is going to condition you to be able to explode and activate those energy systems very fast without lag time. Now, additionally, zone five can still help with mitochondrial biogenesis, just like zone four can. So I would say if I had to put it on a hierarchy, right? I would say zone four should be the bulk of your anaerobic cardio. When you're doing high intensity interval training, you should work in that zone four and maybe just periodically touch that zone five. As far as your lower intensity cardio, zone two is probably the optimal state for longevity, for fat burning, and then zone one should just be your background noise. You should always be activating zone one as much as you can because it's only gonna help recovery and it's only gonna capitalize on what you benefit from zone four and zone two. So stop fighting about which zone is best. They're best for different things. I'll see you tomorrow.